okay so welcome to this channel once again so today our topic is on understanding the lateral torsional buckling behavior in a steel member now this is a very interesting topic and uh, I have received a lot of requests from my users as well as my subscribers to give more insight on this behavior and its uh, contribution and its uh, association with a different design philosophy and also how it is implemented instead. So keeping that in mind, I thought of why don't I provide some insight of this lateral torsional behavior uh, with some conceptual understanding and later on I will try to just discuss more on the codal implementation and uh, some commentary from the codes. So I will divide it into two different parts. In the first part I will go through the more walkthrough inside the lateral torsional behavior in a member and then in a second session that means in a, a second video uh, I will create a discussion, complete discussion on different codal prescription and its uh, implementation in STAT on lateral torsional buckling. So in this video, I will exclusively discuss on the lateral torsional buckling. There is nothing to do with any code or any software. So before I jump into the normal way of understanding the natural torsional buckling, what we understand is a beam. Uh, on which we are applying some load and it is swaying laterally, uh, buckling laterally and it is having some twist. So that's the reason we call it the lateral torsional buckling because both the lateral and the torsional movement are involved in conjunction. Now you must have seen this structural response in a I-shaped steel beam or a steel girder which is subjected to the lateral load. Uh, see this? Uh, the load is acting laterally along the axis of the beam. Now when this type of load is applied to the beam acting laterally, then the beam has the tendency to move laterally with some rotational movement. Now this is not going to happen with any magnitude of load. Uh, with the increment of load, a point will come when the beam will start to show this behavior. So essentially this is known as an instability point and this instability point is also commonly known as a buckling point and for this kind of modes um, we also call it as a lateral torsional buckling mode. So let's take a simple vertical steel cantilever column. Now we will dissect the lateral torsional buckling. I will call it as an LTB of a member and understand why it happens. So let's take this uh, steel a cantilever column and now let's apply some uniform load acting axially along the column line. Now please note that we are now not applying any kind of lateral loading on this member. We will draw this uh, beam analogy later on but this has some understanding or relationship with this discussion. So now if the section doesn't undergo any significant proportion of local buckling uh, considering that the member is a very slender one uh, the column would certainly undergo flexural buckling uh, what we also commonly call it as a oiler buckling basically this is a global buckling there is no kind of local buckling or local element deformation okay so this is a flexural buckling now the question is which direction it will buckle now ideally it will buckle about the weaker axis or the minor principal axis that means the axis which gives lesser bending resistance so i have already created a finite element model instead and applied the same axial load now here you can see now let's perform the eigenvalue method of buckling analysis. So basically any kind of buckling analysis problem is an eigenvalue problem and it has to be resolved to get the buckling factor and the mode shapes that is the eigenvector. So here we could see the first buckling mode is the what we are expecting that is uh, buckling about the weak axis. Here you can see this is the weak axis. Okay, now let's stop here and we will recall this first observation later on. Now let's take another example. 
say if we take slender cane section or a cane stick now if you compress that cane stick uh, then a point will come when the cane stick will tend to buckle so obviously we can simply make it out from our sheer intuition uh, we don't have to be structural engineer to understand this. Uh, this is a simple material behavior often we come across around us. But what will happen if we pull the cane? Will it buckle? The question? No, it won't. In contrast, it will try to get its shape more straightened. You can see here, this is, you can just make out from uh, intuition, if you pull any stick or any kind of slender element, it will get more straight and right. If there is any internal curvature or crookedness, it will also try to make it straight. So another example, let's take for a stretched rope. You can see here that even the lateral force can't even displace the rope element laterally. It's all because the tension in the cable or the rope tries to keep the member in a straight shape. Now, now let's connect these two stories together. Uh, the Euler buckling one that we observed in the first discussion and then the cane stick example. So taking this in account, uh, this time we will apply both the compression and the tension in the same column but in the opposite flanges okay the two different forces acting in the opposite direction at the two opposite extreme edges of that member the values are almost same but they are acting opposite so in the first observation we saw that due to the pure compression the column buckles laterally now in this modified scenario we have the tension and the compression flanges. Now here the tension flange tries to resist the overall buckling. That means the tension flange tries to keep the member in straight shape and the compression flange tries to buckle it laterally. So eventually you would get one flange deflecting more relative to the other one and this differential movement would additionally create the torsional effect to the actual lateral movement. And hence we finally get the buckling mode as a lateral torsional buckling shape. So even we had tried this uh, with a finite element model instead and simulated the same with the similar loading arrangement. Here you can see. Now after analysis, we could see the same lateral torsional buckling mode. You can see here it is uh, swaying laterally and also there is a twist. Now if we apply the lateral load at the tip of this cantilever column or a cantilever beam, you would get the similar effect. That's because one of the flange would experience tension and the opposite flange would experience compression. So the, basically both the scenario are the same. That's the reason we have first tried to explain with a straight cantilever column where we are applying the loads directly along the axial direction. Now in the beam case also, that means when the loads are acting laterally, uh, due to this similar phenomena, the LTB will happen that is the lateral torsional buckling. So this structural behavior is very important and understanding of this is very important as this is one of the very common uh, behavior in the I-shaped beam or an I-shaped gutter and we need to ensure that the compression flange is properly restrained against this lateral torsional buckling effect. So I will create a separate video uh, where I will discuss more on the CODL's perspective and its uh, philosophy and implementation in StatPro. So hope you understand the inside of the lateral torsional buckling and if you have any queries please don't forget to drop a message in the comment box. Thank you all.